Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number five from the um, <coughs> International A Level at Excel, June October 2020 um, S1 Statistics S1 paper. This question here is about correlation and regression. It tells you that a large company rents shops in different parts of the country. A random sample of 10 shops was taken and the floor area X in 10 meters squared now there's something that's going to cause some problems x is in 10 meters squared and the annual rent y in thousands of dollars were recorded the data are summarized by the following statistics the sum of the x values that means the sum of the floor areas is 900 that means it's 9000 meters squared because x is measured in tens of meters and the sum of x squared is 84,818. The sum of y, which is the sum of all the rents collected, is $183,000, because y is in thousands of dollars. And the sum of y squared is 3,434. And they also tells us the regression line of y and x has equation y equals 6.066 plus 0.136x. Use the regression line to estimate the annual rent in dollars for a shop with a floor area of 800 meters squared. So here, I'm sure many people slipped up with this question because of the units and the way that they're described here. Now, what I think a lot of people would have done was would have been this. They would have put 6.066 plus 0.136 times, and they would have put 800 straight into here. Now, 800 is not X. The area is 800 meters squared. Therefore, x is going to be 80 because it's 80 in tens of meters squared because this is tens of meters squared. That gives you 800 meters squared. So x has to be 80 and not 800. And that's very important. So y is equal to y is equal to 6 point, 6 point 0 6 6 plus 0 0.166 three six times eighty and that's what the answer is for y which is sixteen point nine four six sixteen point nine four six now that's not the answer to the question the question says estimate the annual rent in dollars okay so this is not in dollars this is in thousands of dollars so we can say that the annual rent is equal to sixteen thousand nine hundred and forty six dollars okay so there's the answer to this question so you've got to be very careful um, about reading the question um, very, very, you know, carefully, okay? Because it's very easy to just not read these parts like X, okay, and Y, um, you know, that's X and Y, all right? It says, okay, the rent, uh, area 800, okay, area, okay, X is the area, so you'll say 800, put 800 there, and then you put the Y equals uh, $16, you don't think about you don't read that why is actually in thousands of dollars so it's very very important not to just be in a big hurry and you know for that reason not read the questions carefully because you're just throwing away marks okay so be careful to read the questions just take a little bit of time to read the questions carefully that you don't throw away marks which are unnecessary that's actually a bit of a i think it's a bit of a like a an evil examiner who wrote this paper to try and trying to trip you up there okay i'm sure that um, he knew that a lot of people would, especially with this this one here, people would slip up. So, you know, sometimes you've got to be prepared for such type of <laughs> examiners. Anyway, part B, find S, Y, Y and S, X, X. What does that mean? Okay, what that means is, I mean, in, in this type of question, in correlation regression, a lot of your um, work depends on the formula sheet. So when you see something like this, you don't know what it means. You can just go straight to the formula sheet, which I have here. And you can see you have here S, Y, Y, S, X, X. Let's just take these, copy, and put them across to where we want them. Okay, so we've got to find S, Y, Y, and S, X, X. Now, basically, what they've given us is this summary data over here. The sum of X, what does that mean? Basically, it means all the areas. Okay, they've taken the areas. And they've written down, written them down in tens of meters, meters squared, and they've basically found the sum of those ten areas. Okay, so, um, okay, the floor areas was the, they were added together, okay, and 
the sum of all those areas in tens of meters squared was 900. And then they also took those x values. So, that, for example, supposing this is the x value, they, uh, they, they, you know, they took these x values, x1, x2, x3, down to x10. They basically found the sum of all of those areas, and that gave you 900. Then they did x squared. So they took all of these values, they squared them. They squared all of these values, and then they found the sum of the squares of those, and that gave you 84,818. And the same with y, which was the, ten, the, the uh, thousands of dollars. Okay, they, added, they, they basically added up all the, the rents, thousands of dollars, and they found the total. Then they squared each of the rents, added them together, and that gave you y squared. So that's what they did to get this summary data, basically, just um, for a bit of background. So SXX, basically an XYY, is, is kind of like the variance. Um, it's like the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean, you could say. Kind of like it's related to the variance of how the X values, you know, how uh, spread they are from the mean value, okay? And as you can see from here, this is like um, the origin of this formula. It's like how far each value is from the mean value. X bar means X bar means the mean. So this is like the sum of all the differences of all the items from the mean, and then squared. That's squared. That's what that this actually this formula is actually from. So it's an, it's basically gives you S Y Y and X X X gives you an idea of how spread out the Y values are from the mean. And here, how spread out the x values are from the mean. So they want us to find SYY and SXX. So SYY, as they've told us here, is the sum of y squared. means it's um, all the y values are squared and then added together. Minus the sum of y squared over n. So then they've, they've taken the sum of all the y values and then squared that and then divided by the number of items, which is... 10. I think n equals 10 here because there's 10 shops that were considered. All right, so that will help us find SYY. So that's going to be um, the sum of y, which which we've got. And sum of y squared is 3434. That's going to be 3434, 3434, minus the sum of y, which is 183 squared over 10. So that's going to give you SYY. And so we'll write that there, S, Y, Y equals. And S, X, X is going to be the sum of X squared, okay, minus the sum of X all squared divided by N. So the sum of X squared is going to be 84,818. That's 84,818 minus the sum of X and then squared, which is 900. 900 squared over 10. And that will give you S, Y, Y. Sorry, S, X, X. Okay, so let's work out what these are. So we have here 34, 34, 3,434 minus 100 and... Was it 83? I can't read one way in there. 183, that's right. 183 so it's 183 which has to be squared divided by 10 and that gives you 85.1 so that's s y y and s x x is going to be let's change this to 900 nine and two zeros and change this to 84,818 and that gives us 3818 3818 okay so there's part B S double X and S double Y then it says find the product moment correlation coefficient between Y and X again so a lot of students don't understand what this means it's very simple it just means basically um, this is a numerical value which tells you how close together the points are to a straight line so if you plot y against x so this is the floor area and this is the rental um what was it the yearly rent yeah the annual rent okay so you plot them for all all of the 10 points 
okay i i would assume as the area increases the rent increases as well so there would probably be some sort of positive correlation the closer that these points are to the straight line the stronger the correlation and the stronger the correlation the closer the value of this pmcc which is given the symbol r pmcc given the symbol r the closer this is equal to one if it's positive correlation the closer it is equal to one the closer these are to a straight line okay the closer it is to zero the further away they would be from a straight line they'd be spread out everywhere if it's got if it's got negative correlation which is very strong then the value of r will be negative one the closer it's to negative one, the stronger the negative correlation, meaning as one quantity goes up, the other one goes down. In this case, I'm going to assume it's going to be positive. Of kind of makes sense that if the floor area increases, you've got to pay more rent. I would assume that would be the case, but we'll see what the figures give us in the end. But we've got to find what the value of R is. Again, this is a topic which heavily relies on the formula sheet. So if you go to the formula sheet, you'll see very clearly it says the PMCC, the product moment correlation coefficient, is... And they give you this this long thing here. Now, all we really need to worry about is this part here, just that section there. We don't need really need to worry about all of those. Okay, this is basically just alternative ways of writing S X Y and S X X in all, all three cases. It's just the, using the different formula here. All right. So if you know what these values are already, then you can use this. So I'm going to take this and we're going to put it where we need it on this page, down here, and we'll see how we can use this now to find what we need. So what do we have so far? Well, we have SXX. We have SXX is 3818. We have SYY is 85.1. So we have these two. The one that we need is SXY. Okay, we need to find what SXY is. So let's go again back to the formula sheet and look what SXY is given by and take this across and see if we can use this to find it. Okay, so we're going to attempt to use this to find what SXY is. So I'll just put it over there. Now we can see that SXY is equal to the sum of, you've got to have the sum of X times Y, which in our summary data, we don't seem to have. All right, so let me just do something first. Okay, so our summary data that we were given, um, we don't have the information we need to find SXY because we, although we have this and we have this, we don't have this. So we can't use this formula and the information given to us to find SXY. And to find R, we need it. We need to have this. This is what's missing. This is what's missing for us to find what R is. All right, now, a lot of people might give up from here. They might think, oh, we don't know what to do. Don't ever give up. Always go back to what we've been given. Think, what do they give us? Now, I've highlighted something that they've given us, they already gave us, which I'm going to just copy and um, bring down here. So the regression line of y and x, that's something they gave us. Okay, that's something which um, it might come in useful. We don't know. If you're not sure, just think about it. Right? So they've given us this. That's an initial, another piece of, or an additional piece of information they've given us. Maybe we thought that's only useful for part A, and we know we might not need to use it again. But just keep that in mind, because we've come to a, a state where we realise that we can't go any further using the normal kind of methods. Let's go also back to the formula sheet and have a look. All right, so we can see that. All right, what they gave us, the additional thing they gave us was the least squares regression line of y on x, which is y equals a plus bx. So we know what a and b are from this formula that we're given. All right, so let me just take this. This, this might help us. If we consider this or con compare this uh, to what we've been given here, it might help us. So I'm going to now just paste this. So you're looking back and forth uh, you know, to the, um, basically the formula sheet. So I'm just, I'm just doing this to make it kind of like clear to you and keep everything in one place. So you'll see that we've been given this in the question and they've told us that B, okay, which is this 0 0.136 is equal to, is equal to, let me just highlight it, SXY over SXX. Now we need to find SXY. Now we can see that this is B because it's Y equals A plus BX y equals a plus bx. So b is 0 
0 0.136. And we know that B is also equal to S x y divided by s x x so we know what this is and we know what that is we already know we just worked out in the in the earlier part of the question that s x x is 3818 so therefore we can say that s x y is going to be b times s x x so it's going to be 0 0.136 multiplied by 3818 Okay, and that will give us what we need. So we got this 3818 multiplied by 0 0.136. And that will give us 519.248. 519.248. That is the value of SXY. Now we can find the value of R. So R is going to be SXY, which is that value we found just now, 519.248 divided by the square root of SXX, which is 3,818, multiplied by SXY, SYY, sorry, which is 85.1. And that will give us the value of R that we're looking for. Let's just write it like this first. So we're going to have this number. Um, so we'll have the answer we got last divided by the square root of 3818 multiplied by 85.1. Okay, and that gives us the value of R, which is 0 0.91094. 0 0.91094. 91094. Okay, so we can say that that's going to be R is equal to 0 0.911. That's the value of R, okay, which is the PMCC. This is the, this is the PMCC, the product moment correlation coefficient. And as I mentioned, it's very close to 1. Therefore, it's going to be very strong positive correlation. There's a positive correlation. It's quite strong. That means there's a quite a heavy link between those two um, things. Okay, so there's the answer to part C. And now for part D. It says an 11th shop is added to the sample. The floor area is 900 meters squared and the annual rent is $15,000. So this means, remember X is in tens of meters, so X is 90 and this means the Y value for this 11th is 15. Okay, so you can say the 11th value, X is 90 because it's in tens of meters squared and the Y value, the 11th entry value is 15 for its y value because it's in thousands of dollars remember y is measured in thousands of dollars use the formula s x y equals the sum of x minus x bar times y minus y bar to show that the value of s x y for the 11 shops will remain the same as it was for the original 10 shops okay so what does this mean um just imagine we had the table of values you had x and you have the y and we can we can see that x bar is going to be basically the original x bar is going to be 900 divided by 10 because there's 10 entries which is 90 and the original y bar is going to be 183 divided by 10 which is 18.3 okay so this is x bar and this is y bar so just imagine you had a column where you had x minus x bar and y minus y bar. Okay, now if you were to add um, another value of um, 90 to the original values, okay, so you had the sum is 900. So the new x bar, the new x bar is going to be 900. Um, sorry, the new x bar, the sum of uh, the x is 900, okay, 900, that's, that's the new, it's 900, plus the new value for x, the 11th value for x is going to be 90, divided by 11, which is 990 divided by 11, that's the new mean, that's the new mean after the, la the next entries have been, the, the, you know, the next entries ha have been added, which is going to be 
90. 990 over 11 is 90. Okay, so that the, the new x bar is 90. So when you take each of the x values and you subtract from them 90 and you add them all together, when you get to the 11th entry, so you've got the first, second, third, fourth, when you get to the 11th entry, the x value is 90, the y value is 15, x minus x bar, now remember x bar, the new x bar, is 90. So you're going to have 90 minus 90, which is 0. That's going to be x minus x bar. And the new y bar, the new y bar is going to be the old um, value, which is 183. That's the sum of all the values, plus the new value, which is 15 divided by 11. That's going to be the new y bar. So let's work out what that is. 183. Um, let me put it like this. 183 plus the new y value, which is 15, divided by 11. That gives you 18. So the new y bar is 18. So the y bar new is 18. So this is going to be um, 15 minus 18. Okay, the new value minus the, the 11th value minus the new mean. Okay, so when I find, so that's the new x bar and that's the new y bar. Let me just write it slightly out of the way here. Okay, so when I find the value of x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar, okay, all of these will add up to SXY. Okay, which was what, what we found in the last question. And the last part will be 0 times negative 3, which is 0. So SXY is going to be equal to the old value. The new value of SXY is going to be the old value of SXY, which is uh, 519.248. It's going to be 519.248. So this is the new value, plus 0, because you're going to add up all these together. That's what this value is made up of, all those 10 values, plus the last value, which will be 0. Okay, so the new, X, the new value for SXY is going to also be 519.248. It's unchanged. Okay, because I, I hope that makes it, the reasoning clear behind it. Okay, so we could say as the um, the eleventh x value is ninety, and the mean of the values is equal to ninety. Therefore, x minus x bar is going to be zero. Therefore, x minus x bar times y minus y bar equals zero. Therefore, zero is added to the old SXY value, okay? So that kind of like explains it in words. I hope that was clear, right? That, that, that's basically what this, this means. If you were to make a table, that's how it would, it would look. Okay, so that's part D done. And then it says part E, find the new equation of the regression line of Y and X for the 11 shops. Okay, so remember um, the equation of the regression line, let's just go and get that from here. <clears throat> the regression line coefficient of y and x um, sorry the regression line um, the equation regression line of y and x is y equals a plus bx okay and so we've got to find the new equation of the regression line. So B is equal to S X Y over S X X. Now we can see that B is going to be unchanged. S X Y is going to be the same as what it was before. And S X X is also going to be the same. Why? Because if you add together all of these, all of these, that's going to give you the old value of S X X. And you're going to add together, add to that this, which is going to be zero. So you can say that, I don't even have to write this down. I can say that as SXY and SXX are unchanged, they're unchanged, therefore B is equal to 
the same value as was before, which is 0 0.136. That was the value of B before. B is B is unchanged. I'll put B is unchanged. 0 0.136. B is unchanged. Therefore, B equals 0 0.136. So we got the value of B. Now we got to think about the value of A. Now, A is equal to Y bar minus B times X bar. Now, we know that Y bar, the new value of Y bar, we just worked it out of here. It's 18. Okay, so this is 18 minus B times X bar. And we know that X bar is the same as it was before, which is 90. Okay, so um, we can say A is going to be 18 minus... 0 0.136 times 90. So this will be A. We haven't got enough space here to... I'll just make a bit more space. Okay, so A is equal to 18, which I've got here, minus 0 0.136 times 90, which gives you 5.76. So A is 5.76. Okay, so that's 5.76. Therefore, the new equation is y equals, you've got a plus bx, um, a plus bx, so a is 5.76 plus b, which is 0 0.136, that remains the same, times x. And there we have the answer. to part E and then finally part F the company is considering renting a larger shop with area 3000 meters squared so x is equal to 300 comment on the suitability of using the new regression line to estimate the annual rent well this looks like it's a bit too big because the sum of x previously was 900 so the mean of x was 90 and this is 300 it looks like that you know if the sum of all those 10 was 900 okay and this is just this on its own is 300 it looks like that x equals 300 okay seems to have a much larger area than in the collected data because just imagine just that on its own is 300 the sum of all those 10 was 900 the mean was 90 so it looks like it's way out of the data therefore this would be unsuitable this is unsuitable unsuitable as it is extrapolation extrapolation when you go outside of your data range so for example if you have your data range within here you have your line of best fit and your last bit of data is there but you use it to estimate something over here it's outside of our range of the data okay you don't go outside of the range of the data you can interpolate within the range of the data you can estimate something for example which had um a um a, an area say of suppose that the area was 300 meters squared or something like um an area of say eight 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 thousand meters squared sorry no, 800 meters squared, sorry. So it'll be like 80. That's more within the range of our data. Okay, X would be there, therefore be 80. So that's why um, this would not be a... Um, say, so we say it's unsuitable as it is extrapolation. That's fine. All right, it's, it's much larger than the, the much larger area than in the collected data. It's extrapolation, unsuitable. Excuse my bad handwriting. I hope you can see that. Um... Anyway, so thank you for, for watching. That concludes this question number five from the June, October 2020. Be very careful about questions. Um, careful to read the units given, um, you know, carefully so that you don't lose the marks, you know, for no, you know, reason apart from just carelessness. All right. So be aware that some examiners do try to trip you up and be ready for it. So here we have um, on this area at the end of the video, you'll see a link to the playlist for this paper. Here, a link to the playlist for the topic of correlation regression from S1. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And you can also look at the description of the video to find uh, links to other material you might find useful. Thank you very much. See you soon.